All right, so we're going to look at the colony of Rhode Island today. And uh, it was originally called Providence Plantation. It settled in 1636. And plantation is just uh, the word that they used back then for settlement. Uh, it did not mean um, what it means today or what it even means in later in U.S. history when uh, you think of like a really large, huge farm. Um, but it just means a settlement. All right, so let's look at uh, Roger Williams. And Roger Williams, he begins the colony of Providence Plantation, but he doesn't just like come to the New World and go, hey, let's set up this colony in Rhode Island, and we're, it's going to be a refuge for religious minorities. That ends up happening. But he originally comes to Massachusetts as a Puritan. Um, and, and all of New England is really dominated by the Puritans, um, with the Plymouth Pilgrims coming first. They were of the separatist variety of Puritans. They had the same basic beliefs, but they believed that the Church of England was so corrupt that you have to separate from them. To be truly a worshiper of God, you must be separated from the Church of England because it is too corrupt to, to be a uh, true church. And so other Puritans begin coming in the 1630s, and they settle in Boston and Massachusetts and all around that. That's the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And this is where Roger Williams comes. And he comes to Boston, and he, although he is a Puritan, he is kind of, of the, more of the separatist variety. And uh, while he's there, he becomes even more of the separatist variety of Puritan. And... Uh, he just uh, has a lot of trouble uh, with some of the different authority figures there in in and around Boston. Uh, Williams is one thing he's not necessarily known for, but he actually starts helps to start the first Baptist church in America, and so that church is still standing, is still there today. It's the same uh, church, uh, not necessarily the same building, but the same continuous uh, church, and he. Um, also, uh, just this phrase he says is that I think is really a powerful phrase uh, and uh, kind of gets it at, at the core of what he's all about, which is the, one of the things he's all about, which is religious liberty. Um, and he says, forced worship stinks in God's nostrils. In other words, you know, if, if you make people worship God, well, then it's not truly worship. And so, therefore, God doesn't receive it as worship, and it stinks in his nostrils. And it's just kind of a powerful statement, and so I, I like that one, and I thought I'd share it. So let's look at um, Roger Williams' dangerous opinions. Um, and these are opinions today that we all would think, you know, this is like absolutely right. But in those times, um, it was these were kind of dangerous thoughts and dangerous opinions. Uh, one of them, first off, is the separation of church and state. He believed that um, the church affairs should be separated from the state affairs, and, and that when the church is mingled together with state affairs, that it corrupts the church. Um, it doesn't really help the civil affairs. It hurts church affairs. Uh, and so in his colony, one of the first things they set up, it's a majority vote. In other words, what the most the people vote for. So it would be what would hold and what would happen, what would pass. And so a majority of the heads of households governed a new settlement, but only in civil things. So they didn't control church um, doctrine or anything like that. If you had disagreements, church uh, disagreements, then that was okay. The, that did not affect your standing in the civil government, in the the government that was the city or the, plant, the, the settlement, basically. He also believed in freedom of religion, and he called it more often liberty of conscience. And um, that this is that you know you should allow others to practice their beliefs even if you don't agree with them, and that you know the, we can't force people to believe a certain thing. And then finally, he believed that Native Americans should be treated fairly, um, that they should be paid for their land. And very similar to um, the Pennsylvania, plantation or the Pennsylvania settlement he you know they these two colonies these two colonies had really good relations with Native Americans for the most part because they treated the the Native Americans fairly that doesn't mean there was all everything was perfect there, there were struggles and there become some some pretty serious struggles uh, pretty later on but especially while Roger Williams is around um, he they, there's a, a, a really good relationship with them, and one of the reasons that that is is Roger Williams learns their languages. Um, he he's one of the first people he actually publishes a book about their languages, and and he really learns them well. He's he's great with languages, and so 
they had a lot of respect for him, the Native Americans did, and that, that translated to a lot of peace in Rhode Island. So the government in Rhode Island is um, basically, it is a royal charter. It ends up being a royal charter. Um, they receive the royal charter, and they have a governor and a colonial assembly. But in those early days, um, it was simply a small colony with religious liberty, uh, separation of church and state, majoritarian democracy. In other words, majority rules with the, the majority of the people voted for. And they didn't even have um, like a governor early on. It was They would elect a president. And the, so it was all very much a... Um, you know, we're in this together and we're working together to to reach our goals. Uh, as the colony, these small colonies set are, are being set up because, you see, Roger Williams set up Providence Plantation and then there's another one that set up um, Portsmouth and all of a sudden all these different um, people that are having trouble with the Puritans in Massachusetts end up coming to Rhode Island and setting up these little colonies. Well, these eventually form together to become the colony of Rhode Island. Um, in his colony and several of these others, um, slavery is also banned in these early days. And, and there's no slavery. Roger Williams is against slavery. And some of the other leaders were also against slavery. And so it's banned in these colonies. And it doesn't exist for a while. Um, but some of the other smaller colonies that form around at this time that become part of the Rhode Island colony do have or allow slavery. And that become, it does become a, actually a pretty big part of Rhode Island's economy for a little while. So geography and economy kind of go together because the geography of a region really tells you the kind of economy that you're going to have. And so it was coastal with rocky soil, which means there's going to be fishing, but not a lot of farming. Um, there's thick forests, which provides some other um, resources, and mild summers with long, cold winters. So the, what kind of economic activity does that lead to? Well, one of their big economic activities is actually dairy farming. Um, huge dairy farming re region in this region. Um, and then there's other farming, but it's subsistence farming. And this is throughout Massachusetts as well and Connecticut. There's lots of farming that happens, but it's primarily subsistence level. In other words, it's not going to, you know, there's not huge cash crops. They may make plant more than they can really use themselves, but it's not providing a, a stable income. It's, it's, it's pretty hit or miss, and it's um, just a little bit extra that they may be able to make. Uh, the major economic activities are dairy farming, fishing. Obviously, it's coastal. That's going to be a big part of it. Fishing and whaling and things like that. And then with the thick forest, that's going to be great for lumber and therefore also shipbuilding, which is going to be perfect because they're coastal. So the, the, the forests are nearby. You cut the cut the trees down. You, you make the lumber, and then you can also then build these ships. And it's one of the only things early on in these early days that is actually being done, is actually being built and manufactured in the colonies is ships. Uh, most other things, they're having to send the raw materials to back to England, but in, this is one of those things they actually build it there. And then finally, the last economic activity is rum, uh, the production of rum. And this is where we start to see slavery really come in, because the it is part of the triangular trade and so there's um, a lot of slaves in the Caribbean and there's get bringing sugar from the Caribbean to New England and here in New England there's different places they buy the sugar distill it into rum and part of this trade also is the trade in slaves and so a lot of slaves are actually working in this region within this uh, process, part of this process, and so uh, it's, once again, it's not nearly as big as it is in the southern colonies, but uh, in this region is pretty high, slavery does have a pretty high impact um, in this area for, for quite a while. And then one last person that's really important for Rhode Island uh, you'll hear about is Anne Hutchinson. Uh, similar to Roger Williams, she has some disagreements with the church in Boston. Uh, and their disagreement is, is, is kind of uh, similar to some of the ones that uh, Roger Williams has. He says that sal they, they agree, the church in Boston, the, the authorities there, and Anne Hutchinson agree that salvation is by grace alone. They agreed upon that. Um, but then what most of the 
Puritans in and around Boston said was that good works are evidence of that salvation. And Ann Hutchinson says, well, that's not necessarily the case. And so you can't just because you see somebody doing something doesn't automatically mean that they are not um, saved. And and so that is um, a, a big deal in and around the the with the Puritans. And so that she ends up, you know, they're they're, they call her into for trial. She has a trial, and during this time, she's actually banished from the colony. And during this trial, it also comes out that she believed God spoke to her um, through the Bible, which, once again, that's the kind of part that they agreed on. The, the, the Bible did, um, God did speak to people through the words of the Bible. But then she also would go a step further and say directly to a believer's heart. And that was the part that was more controversial as well. And so for these things, she is banished from the colony, and she goes to Rhode Island where she knows that there is religious freedom. Roger Williams says, hey, this is the place to come. She goes to uh, uh, not exactly where Roger Williams is. So her uh, her followers and, and her husband and others come to an area nearby where they set up a colony as well, which becomes part of Rhode Island and uh, practice religious freedom there as well. So that is uh, some quick facts and real quick overview of Rhode Island.